I'm going to read this because it's easier to read because I was writing under inspiration, like I said before. We know a recession is coming, but God is going to use it to cause people to transition. He has new opportunities for many, new relationships and new places to live for some. We're going to see a huge transfer of people moving from one city to another, from one church to another. Now, we've seen this the last couple of years. We're going to see one more year of it, 2023, in a major way. A financial famine is coming, and it's going to come over different parts of the world. And for some, God's using the season of lack to put you in a place to make decisions you wouldn't have ever made if you were comfortable. He sometimes allows a level of lack to bring you into decision making, to bring you into new places that you would have never gone if you weren't forced there. I heard recently with my wife, T.D. Jakes was referring to this, and he said Joseph's brothers would have never gone to Egypt to change the destiny of Israel if there wasn't a famine. There they found their brother whose position and greatness to the fulfillment of God's dream. Some of you are going into a new land to get a provision you're called to. Some of you are going to find yourself in a new relational sphere. Now realize God's calling some of you out of something to be into something new. So we feel like you have daily roots because God has uprooted you from things that were very comfortable and things that you thought were going to be the rest of your life. There's a global movement of shifting people around cities, neighborhoods, states, and countries because God is divinely setting up the world for great harvest. There's a pivot and a transition for many to make in the season before the coming recession. Some of you don't know why, but God's saying sell the house, change the investment, move to a new city, change careers, start the business, go to a new church. We're going to see some people who are staples of their community as politicians who are serving in lands for decades. We're going to see celebrities who were tied to places like L.A. and Nashville move. We're going to see pastors who thought that they were going to die in the city that they were serving in. And we're going to see it. The reason why is because there's a global movement of people who are going to be like a resetting of a giant chessboard so that what God has planned cannot be put into check by the spirits who have already been defeated. Now, here's the warning. Joshua 1, 9, it says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. My warning is that you have to obey God's inner promptings in the season because it will affect the way that you're blessed in the next season. God's requiring a surrender of what many of you thought your life would look like. You you didn't think you were going to sell the house. You didn't think you were going to make the, the offer on, you know, on something new. You didn't think you were going to change careers. You didn't think you were going to go to a new school. You didn't think you were going to do all these different types of things that God's pushing you into. You didn't think you were going to start another micro business. You didn't think you were going to start have another baby. But God's putting in your heart something that you never thought you would do. You didn't think that you would be asked or that you would even feel the level of surrender you feel right now. But that surrender is going to lead you into something that blesses you and brings a divine setup that you would have never had if you didn't listen. Now, if you don't listen, if he speaks to you, you don't pivot, you're going to find yourself outside the blessing of God, outside the sphere of favor he has for you, outside the river of his presence on your gifts, talents, and relationships, your very heart. Although his presence never leaves us, it does pull in places of abundance that we're called to. And this is a season of Matthew 7, 13 through 14, enter the narrow gate because the wide gate and the broad path is the way that leads to destruction. Nearly everyone chooses that crowded road. The narrow gate and the difficult way leads to eternal life. So, so very few find it. God's speaking to many of you right now and obedience will bring you through a narrow way, a way that is so narrow, you, you don't know if you can even fit, but it's gonna bring you to a destination you couldn't have imagined, Ephesians 3.20. In the wilderness, when God asks you to make a change, or when he allows the opportunity to dry up or the finances to start to be just enough, he'll make a way in the wilderness and he'll make streams on the wasteland that will lead you to a place of abundance that you weren't anticipating. You aren't used to the season or what's coming because it's new to you. And don't pretend you have been here before because if you overestimate your past experience in this current situation, you're not going to be dependent enough on the Holy Spirit to lead you. Isaiah 43, 19 says, see, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Not yesterday. You don't know this place before it's new. Do you not perceive it? And some of you are perceiving the new thing right now for the first time. And God's saying, I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. And I'm just going to pray for those of you who've been in transition to really have hearing hearts and that you would see, because I feel like, you know, I'm seeing some of you in the comments even saying like, I feel like God's saying move or God's saying, you know, God's saying change careers or God's saying there's something new. You don't know what the new is, but you're open to it. And that's the beginning of this to be open to it. But God wants to use you and not only the now and what you're doing in life now, but he has a destiny in the world, in our generation that's coming that there's a divine setup for. And I believe that many of you are feeling that urgency or you're starting to feel that prompting. If you haven't felt it over the last few years, some people are getting recruited to the urgency right now to say, 
wow, there's a shift coming. There's a change coming. And some of you, this is your sign. This is your confirmation, this prophetic word, as you've persevered through with me over this terrible stream yard Zoom because it's not working very well today. Uh, as you persevered with me, you're starting to feel the urgency of heaven. You're starting to feel like, oh, these, some of these decisions, I, I need to get some wisdom, some counsel. I need to bring some people in on this. I need to go into some prayer about this, deeper prayer. I need to share this with my spouse. I need to share this with my children. And that's going to be hard for many people because you're going to say, hey, I know we had an agreement or we negotiated that this is the place we're supposed to live, or this is the job we're supposed to be in, or that this is the school we're supposed to go to, or this is the the land we're supposed to live in, but God's doing something right now. And we're going to watch a great shifting, maybe one of the greatest in history for Christians in church and in ministry and in life, where we're going to watch people move around and be repositioned and people change and people who thought that they were never going to leave. Like I said, pastors who thought they were going to die on the hill in some certain city who God moves into a whole new region because he wants to use our experience. There's a new blending. There's a new uh, sphere of synergy that's going to happen is we're willing to go somewhere and do something that we wouldn't have done ourselves as we're willing to go on a journey that's led by a father, led by his spirit to bring us an outcome that we wouldn't have had without being led. And the warning is if you don't go when he's calling you, it's going to be really uncomfortable for you because you're not going into the sphere of his blessing. Though you may still feel, feel blessed, you're going to have an awareness that there's more that you have no access to unless you obey him, unless you surrender. And I know for me personally, like, you know, I remember when we were moving from Studio City into another part of LA, and I was in my dream life, my dream house where I wanted to go, the resources we needed were there, even having a sound stage, the whole thing. And we moved from that place knowing we were obeying God, and it changed everything for the good. Even though I didn't understand it, we had to obey and go forward, and it changed everything. And I want to encourage many of you right now that you're changing, you're shifting, you're growing, and what you prayed for and dedicated at church services and worship time saying, God, I'll surrender all. I surrender all. He's saying, I'm taking you up on that surrender now. Listen to me, hear and obey. The Bible is very clear about obedience. It's the number one thing that we're called to is to obey the word of God for the theology and the character and the nature of Christ, but also to obey the spirit of God, to understand when he speaks to us, when he prompts us, when we get that instinct, when we get that intuition, that we change with him because we're going to come into a place of agreement that brings us into the place that we're called to, that he destined for us, that again, we can't get to by ourselves. So I know many of you are responding right now. I think it's so hard when um, you know we, we don't know where we're going yet exactly. And that's a hard place for us as Christian adults, as Christian people to say, God, I surrender all. I know there's change. I don't like the instability sometimes of changes. I know that's human nature is we don't like the instability of changes, but give him everything. Give him your best right now. Give him what you think, you know, you want to make a decision one way, but say, God, is there a decision you have that I wouldn't make without you? And again, he's not going to lead you somewhere you don't want to go. Maybe the journey to there may be hard. Maybe, uh, maybe there's some misunderstanding on, on times when we give God everything, but where he's leading you to is exactly where you want to be. It's in his blessing. It's exactly where he has you. Uh, it's going to be one of the be best places, most most glorious seasons of your life, but you have to follow him there. And I love that some of you are saying, for me, it's financial security is leading me into. For me, it's a new city is moving into. A few of you said you're changing ministries. A few of you said you're changing schools for your kids. This is so important that you listen to God. I'm so proud of you for listening. But some of you are saying, I haven't heard anything then good. Make the best decisions with the most wisdom you have available to you. If you don't hear God, that means he's trusting you to make the decision in your life. And out of that wisdom, he'll, he'll bring his abundance. But some of you are hearing him. And if you do not obey, I'm telling you, you're going to remember this word. If you do not obey, I'm going to put the fear of God in you. Then you're going to find yourself outside of grace. You're going to find yourself outside of provision. You're going to find yourself outside of good social spheres that he has for you. And that's really important. So I want to encourage you to do that. Okay. So I just want to Pray for you as, as we end the show. Holy Spirit, would you come and give us the courage to make bold decisions? Joshua 1.9, you commanded us to courage, which means you'll always provide the courage. You've commanded us to boldness, which means you'll give us the boldness to make decisions. Bring us into unity as our family unit. If our family hasn't heard together, give us the grace to walk the journey, even when we're not going maybe feeling the same direction. Lord, reconcile where different people are hearing different things and families. I pray, God, that you would help 
even churches, whole churches are moving in a new direction. Some of you are leading a church or a ministry and God's saying, make the big leap forward that I'm telling you to do. Maybe it's shutting down some things to open up some things. Some of you have businesses that you're hearing like a whole new genre, a whole new industry. And to do that, you're going to have to sacrifice something to get there. Make the sacrifice. Holy Spirit, let us be able to surrender all. Let us be able to take the greatest risk maybe in our life or, or maybe this iteration of our life. God, I pray that we would just so be filled with faith and courage to make wild decisions with you. And God, not wild as in they're so wild that they're unbelievable, but decisions that we know that if, if these pay off, it's going to change not only our lives and our family's lives, but it's going to allow us to leave an imprint on the kingdom of God that we would have never left without this surrender, this sacrifice. Jesus, we want to live our life for you. So we surrender our agenda to you and we say, you can have it all again. And just make that surrender again to him. And if it's hard to surrender and even think like, oh, I'd never move. Like, I, I hope God doesn't ask me to do that. Sometimes when we get that fear, it's because we're holding on a little too tight. It doesn't mean he's going to move you. But sometimes you're holding on a little too tight to the range of your life. And even just surrender, even if it's a good place that you know you're going to live in, surrender and say, this is all yours, God. You can do whatever you want. That's what Christianity is, is saying, God, you can have it all. Even if I don't want you to have it, sometimes you can have it all. And I know that you'll never take anything away from me without giving me something better. So you can have it all, even though I'm not anticipating some of the areas that I'm blessed and that you're going to take from me. But I do know that you can have them if you want them. So that if it, if it somehow gives you more glory, you can have them. And I just, a trusted son or daughter believes that God only has good agenda or intention in, their, in his heart for them. So it's so important. And I think that some of you are going to come into the greatest momentum of your life while other people are in recession because you obeyed you're not going to be in recession or why other people are in in a place of like lack of faith or confidence because your faith is building because you're obeying you're going to be like wow god you brought me so far i would i would have been stuck there with the people who lack confidence in you and in themselves but because i followed you i'm here so you're going to see the difference because you're going to be around people who didn't make a decision of surrender and sacrifice or people who were too afraid or people who had self-interest and god is saying come with me come on this journey with me and it is a transitional journey for many of you make the pivot and i declare that over you make the pivot if you're supposed to pivot make the pivot this again is your sign in jesus name